Greetings and salutations. I'm back down the shed. Decided to do a different tact on my boot covering. So what I did is I ended up re-registering for a 30 day trial on 3D Studio Max or is it now called 3DS Max through Autodesk. And I haven't used it in a while so it took me a little bit to get myself reacclimatized. Using my very, very limited amount of 3D skills, I decided to build the foot in 3D. I deliberately did not make it 100% screen accurate. There's just a lot of intricacies when I look back at the design and some really weird structural things. I was just like, I really cannot be bothered. I'd rather have something a little bit simplistic. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of things on how to use a Pepecura design, but if you're interested in Pepecura, it might be something I'll tackle a bit later. However, there's plenty of tutorials on how to do that. If you are very interested in doing Pepecura unfolding and sizing and all that properly, uh, I highly recommend just biting the bullet and buying the license for the Pepecura designer. It's a one-off thing. It's a lifetime license, especially if you're building things in 3D and you want to unfold them. It's just a lot more easier than trying to do it yourself. Just get the software. If not, if you just want to download them, there's a free viewer. Just use that, as simple as. The other changes for these feet coverings, I'm not going to use Core Flute, mostly because I'm still a bit unsure on how it's going to work bending and stuff like that with these complex shapes. I'm going to keep that to more of the more squarish stuff or something that doesn't have a lot of complicated folds. So I'm actually going to be using foam. Now this is some of my favorite foam. I'm actually running almost completely out of it. So I'm going to have to try and get some more sometime soon and you can't get this in this country. That's going to be fun. Anyway, so what I've got here is all my pages of design. Now, obviously there's still a bit of work to do because I've got to combine some of these pages together. For example, I need to combine these two pages together. And when those two pages come together, I got to also combine these two pages together. That small bit of overlap goes onto the other page. What I'm going to do is basically cut off one of these ends, tape it down, so it roughly lines up and that should be pretty easy. That one long strip here, that's basically the lower leg covering. I'm gonna probably do that in core flute and not worry about too much in foam. The how I've designed this is in such a way that probably didn't need to cut these out. I can probably just use the actual measurements as a reference for where my folds are. And I'm just gonna figure out the length by just measuring my foot and all that stuff but I still need the little notches that are off the other bit. So once everything's like put together in there, I need to start cutting out some of these patterns. Now I can either use some scissors or I can just use a scalpel. And always, use, if you're gonna use a scalpel, definitely use a metal ruler. In fact, you should be using a metal ruler when you're cutting out foam. For those who don't know, have not had a chance to use this, what essentially you're gonna be doing is taking your foam bits and your paper pattern, and you're gonna be transferring it onto the foam. It's obviously a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the general idea. So once that's on there, you can pin this down. I've used masking tapes in the past, uh, or you just hold it down and get a just a white pen marker and you can mark on the foam itself. If you're using a light color foam, like uh, then you can just use black pens, Sharpies and stuff like that. Using black foam, obviously, you're gonna run into a little bit of difficulty with that. So silver and white pens work a treat. Now, once that's on there, cut it out. How this is designed is there's several pieces. I need, I need uh, two of everything except for that. I need four of them. Uh, the other thing is notice that this foam is a little bit bent. These tend to come in big rolls and stuff. Now, when it comes to these uh, dotted lines, they're gonna be angled. Now, a technique I'm gonna be using is I'm gonna be cutting into the back of this where those dotted lines are, cutting out a channel, and then gluing the two sides back together. So give it that more defined angle. It's not gonna curve, it's gonna have a defined angle. I'll talk about some of these techniques a bit later. What I might do now, I might just start cut all these pieces out. Once I've cut all the paper pieces out and all the foam pieces, then I'll bring it back to me and I'll go a bit more in depth into how I'm gonna join a lot of this stuff together. So, see you in a few minutes.
So anyway, I've just finished cutting out all the pieces for the boot. So what I've done is on the back, I've actually marked out those lines. That's the front, that's the back. So if I grab this, that's gonna look pretty much like that. Now, the reason I've done this is because in a tick, I'm actually gonna start cutting out some grooves. And what that's gonna do is that will be when I glue these together, it'll have a more harder looking edge. Now, when it comes to connecting some of these also together, see if I just put these together like this, you'll notice that there's a slight discrepancy. So I'm also gonna be cutting some of these parts on an angle. Give it a bit of a chamfer there, chamfer there, maybe just on one edge. I don't need it to be perfectly 90 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is cut, when I cut out these channels here and glue them together and I cut out these channels here, I'm not gonna be doing too much. Just wanna basically take a sliver out. And if the edges are a bit too hard on the piece I glue together, I can just sandpaper them down a bit and they'll be fine. One thing about cutting foam like this, uh, this is actually really good foam. It cuts incredibly well. Some glue foams are a bit spongier. You might require a couple of cuts. Now, one thing you always gotta be trying careful of, and I still have issues with this, so don't worry, is trying to keep your angle 90 degree straight down, or as close as you can. Now, things just happen. Sometimes you cut on angles, it happens. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Look, this foam is very forgiving, so things don't have to be 100% perfect. You can fix a lot of this stuff later, so that's fine. Now, what I'm going to be using to glue all this together is super glue. All you need to do with this particular glue is screw it on, the inside pierces it, and that's good to go. This particular glue actually keeps well for quite a while. It won't last forever. For what we do, it will last long enough. It comes in packs like this. I think it also comes in packs of two. You get this at some bunnings, some bunnings don't have it. If you can get a hold of this stuff, this is great for foam. My mate Felix will back me up, he put me onto it. Uh, if you can get some Malaysian glue, even better. That's the stuff that'll literally blister you. So yeah, I'm gonna start constructing this and we'll see how we go. <laughs>
Now I'm going to stop here at this point. I'm getting a little bit tired myself and I've been doing this for a few hours so I need a break but I haven't fully glued this all down yet. As you can see it's kind of gotten there. So yeah once that's all glued down to the edges I'm probably going to go heat gun the fuck out of this and get some bit more definition into those uh, edges. As a foot it's, uh, it's coming along quite nicely. I'm quite like that. One thing I didn't talk about, as I was talking about channeling the, uh, try and save the f your 45 degree ones as much as possible. Cause this is what I'm going to be doing to connect these, cause these two edges kind of sit flush, which is going to be not impossible to glue. So if I get some of these off cuts, I can essentially create a little gap. Now, once all that's done, I'll get the glue gun out and I'll start uh, reinforcing a lot of these edges. So you probably also notice is occasionally, you know, you go in a bit too deep and you get a blowout. Uh, there's one there and there's one there. That's it's a little bit too thin. I've cut too much through. It happens. And also some of these edges aren't quite right. So that's easy fixed. I can, I'll sand these back down and I'll get some putty and fill them in. That's going to be fine. Once I've, you know, heat gunned all this, this should actually set a bit more solid. Plus when sort of the glue is all in, it'll be a bit more solid. Now, I use super glue, but you can use contact adhesive. A lot of prop builders in America use contact adhesive. Some of the other ones are gonna have a hard edge, but I like this kind of softer edge. The aesthetic I'm thinking is more like a pressed metal. So like, you know, it's a manufactured look. So it's like not quite handmade. It's gonna look, you know, try and make it look a bit like something that's, you know, mass produced. You know, robots are gonna be pretty much mass produced. They're not gonna be made by hand. They're gonna create robots to make robots. So yeah, bit of work to do and I gotta knock out another one of these. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please, you know, do the usual click like, click share, click subscribe. If you haven't already done so, there's a bell down there. Apparently you hit that if you want to get updated on when things go up. I love your comments. Please keep, keep commenting. Uh, if you've got any hints and tips that I, you feel I should explore or I think you think, hey, you should try doing this way and it'll improve, improve me as a builder, by all means, let me know. So until next time, see ya.